All right, ladies and gentlemen. I had to redo my intro because you know I'm streaming and I'm also recording it. That's to make sense for the people that are watching outside of YouTube or Twitch. Uh, game number three. We all know how the series is going to end, but let's see how Team Liquid kick it into gear. Uh, they start off with sending Wild Turtle onto the stage. Wild Turtle is thinking to myself, there's no way in hell I want TSM to win titles when I'm not on TSM. So I'm going to jinx it all right here together with Riveton on stage. I'm going to put some bad voodoo mojo Zulu stuff onto the trophy and make sure the Team Liquid wins. And that's why Team Liquid took it home. Full mid lane bans. Low Testo Jensen. JK. And that's the classic gangplank. Team Liquid. Pick it first three. It's, it's definitely a classic. Impact gangplank is, is quite juicy. I respect the gangplank. But right now, if I look at draft, I would be more happy to be TSM draft. I think uh, Vladimir is a great matchup into, into G GP. I don't know how much nerfs and buffs have changed it, but in the past it was like, if you pressure into topside, it's so easy to dive GP with Vladimir, uh, like with the jungle. And uh, that's usually how I saw the matchup going. And um, I think with that in mind, it should be rough. Kalista Galio also. Team fight composition, that's the name of the game. TSM uh, have a read on Team Liquid that they just want to fight. It's tricky to play against Tam Kench, you know, with Galio. It's uh, definitely something that uh, you have to play around very well. You, know? you have to play around eat. And if you were in a compromising position with Galio, for example, and you ate, uh, the target that Galio went for, all of a sudden Galio is a very easy target to kill. So I think it's definitely a skill matchup. And knowing Core JJ, uh, the man's, uh, man's a genius. So we will see. A lot of bans towards Leblanc, a champion that we don't see that often anymore. We see it a couple of times. With Rise, Lissandra out, and then Corky ban. Uh, there's a lot of champions that uh, are not like are decent into Leblon and uh, I don't know I don't even remember what Jensen picks here Syndra this is a rough matchup I think uh, it's a skill matchup for sure but I think it's easier for Leblon depending on jungle pick but imagine picking Skarner when enemy when enemy can pick Rek'Sai now that's a that's a big meme if I ever saw one I think Rek'Sai is absolutely b -b -b broken and uh, he got last picked in this game it's, uh, it's crazy hello Japanese tutor to summarize the compositions uh, Team Liquid uh, TSM they have easier an easier time engaging but I think it's going to come down to who has the priority, who's going to win on side when it comes to Gangplank Vladimir. Uh, I think the scaling is also in favor of TSM. I kind of feel like TSM have the better composition all, all around. Team Liquid have some tools with the Globals, with the Time Kench Ultimate later on. If they have prior mid with Syndra, they can spread that pressure onto the map. When Skarna is 6, maybe they can one-shot people uh, quite easily. Forces the enemy to buy QSS, which might be wonky for team fights. Tam can also deny a lot of damage from the enemy team. So I think, um, you know, if I would have to give it to one side, I think TSM have the better draft. I think their lane matchups are good. They have the stronger jungle and their scaling is very, very good as well. So I think... Uh, Team Liquid are in a position once again where they have to. Um, uh, why are you looking at me? What's up? I was just if you fed the cats. If I fed the cats? Yeah. Yeah, I fed the cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Team Liquid, what was I saying? Team Liquid, I feel like they need to uh, snowball through the first counter ultimate. They need to kind of win their lane matchups uh, uh, where it's possible. 
if they can win bottom I think Varos Tam versus Calista Gallio I think is skill matchup but I think it's easier for TSM jungle to to impact bottom I think it's very hard to gank with Skarno onto bottom unless they cheese level 2 level 3 I think TSM definitely in the draft have a lot more tools and a lot more uh, ways to to crush the enemy I feel like Rek'Sai has all the power in the world to, to impact this game. If you, got a, if you got an offer from another team, would you take it or leave it? Uh, I get uh, offers from a lot of teams all the time. But... Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, I'm on the contract. It's not like someone calls me up. Hey, Amaro, come coach us. I'm like, hey, why not? Hey Juzuke, I'm not coming into work today. I'm sorry, but this guy in Twitch chat offered me a contract, and uh, it doesn't pay much. It doesn't pay much, but you know, fuck it. Why not? Core JJ, your man on the screen. Broken Blade, your man on the screen. I didn't get a chance to say what I want to say about Core JJ, but he's been a force. I feel like Team Liquid. Um, Played well, but I think Xmithy and Impact could have uh, done a lot better. I think Jensen did what he could with his champ. Nothing too spectacular, but I think Core JJ and uh, Double Lift uh, played very, very well. You know, actually, did he play well? well Double Lift trolled the first game. Double Lift trolled the first game. We're not giving Double Lift the redemption that he deserves just yet. He is. Uh, Definitely big troll in game one. Game two, he's playing Ash against Hecarim. You know, God bless him. It's a really, really rough one. Gangplank with Grasp. Syndra mid lane with Electrocute. Bjergsen with the match. I think they have exactly mirrored, uh, mirrored runes. So this matchup, when I asked Jizuki about it, it's like, yeah, if you hit Qs, you win. Then you have to cancel... Uh, Cancel the the Leblanc uh, W with a re, and then uh, you have to hope that you don't get ganked. Early on, uh, T Sim can fake pressure a lot. We have uh, a red start from Rexai. Vladimir Leash is not a thing. Rek'Sai is uh, very unhealthy in the jungle. Skarn Rek'Sai is a fine matchup for Rek'Sai. Uh, Skarn. He, he can't really get punished much and his clear speed is quite good. So uh, it, it's more about the impact on the map. I think Rek'Sai can impact the map heavier on level 3 with his flash. Skarn at 6 can impact heavier with his flash. So that's uh, what we're paying attention to. Akkadian uh, with the red start into Raptor, sweeping. Smithy is trying to help him, maybe. The altar is still secure for Smithy, so he's confident going into this space. Mid lane Pryo is in favor of TSM, so I think they can go for this. Top side also looks in favor of Broken Blade. I'm just looking at the CS number, and uh, usually the, the person with the highest CS number uh, is the one that uh, has Pryo, early on at least. Unless someone is a monkey and missile or a CS. KoJJ and double lift with Tam and uh, and Varus, they can poke uh, quite a bit early on. TSM needs to uh, look for those Olins. It's very important now when Rek'Sai, when TSM's wave bounces here, that Rek'Sai is uh, willing to contest. But there is an issue here with TSM being uh, quite unhealthy. Can Smoothie get the cannon? No. Doesn't even want to try. Zven just burns all his mana to take it. Double is getting traded on. They know Rexai position already. I don't think uh, wording here uh, for Tam is correct. Okay. Well, if he if he gets that off, then it's it's valuable. It's uh, my mistake actually. Koji J did good move. It's good move. Double if shoes shouldn't uh, shouldn't be walking up so far.
Sven using potion, double left keeping his. Can Sven uh, push out the wave? Skarn is going to match. I think Team Liquid are in a better position. So here TSM bot lane, they want to push in the wave and they want to uh, uh, basically uh, make the bounce in their favor. I just want to see the wave position on bottom. Come on, observer. Oh, Jürgsen trolls the freeze. Oh, it's a disaster. <laughs> He has a better realizer instead of the biscuit, so it's not horrible. Bottom wave position, I can't see it. I, I don't know what's going on. Okay. I thought there would be like a, a major battle here uh, where Rek'Sai tries to contest and Skarna is going to look to contest too and they look to try to kind of keep the freeze. Smoothie is Smoothie trolling here? Like why is he not committing? Smoothie, hello. Smoothie. Smoothie. Just fucking E. He's he's in creeps. Smoothie. So Smoothie? His name is Smoothie, yes. That could be a cute cat name. Definitely not. Not after this play. So Smoothie is playing the game of spectator here. Is Maybe he's just so fucking surprised by how fucking crazy Team Liquid are. They're fake pressuring the shit out of them. Smoothie just needs to fucking E and... Uh, forces the eat. Drop the fucking W. And then... Like start channeling your W when uh, no they could have just fucking committed their all in I think very very good situation for them to go all in. Guardian is popped. No, Smoothie is just trolling. Why, why, why does he refuse to use the spell? Okay. Akkadian not accomplishing much here on the Rek side. Stalemate until level six is very positive. For Team Liquid. From minute from uh, like early on, I think their ultimates are uh, stronger. X Mithy, X Mithy. Team Liquid do a huge bottom lead. I blame Smoothie. Reverse situation now, Team Liquid are the ones building a wave. Heal comes out late. Good gank. Not sure why he's walking like this. This is quite true. Just play with the wave, make TSM, make the first move, and then you go. It's kind of predictable that uh, Rexa is gonna be gonna be here. He gets spotted on the mid wave. He goes down to bottom side. Like they they know this is coming, right? So I think this is uh, quite a big mistake from Team Liquid. They can win the situation. They are healthier. They have a big wave. I think they can definitely win. They also have Gangplank gold. They use a lot of resources here. And now TSM should be able to freeze the bottom wave and uh, get the base off. Oh, Varus stays. No freeze. Double Mercury on mid. They're not killing each other anytime soon. I guess you have zero knowledge of where Skarn is. <laughs> if you don't know where your teammate is, you have a problem. <laughs> the 
This is very bold. They're using the fact that they have bottom prio to start this one off, but double lift didn't base yet. So this is uh, quite a crazy play. Bjergsen is just trying his best to delay. XBD no ultimate. This is definitely a situation where TSM should fucking hard win. Go GG with the eat. Very good Syndra E here. Okay, they got the ocean and bottom wave is in fine position. Is it worth? I would say worth. This is really, really big worth for Team Liquid. I thought they, in this position that they would not get away with uh, as much as they did get away with. Uh, Coach JJ with the, with the nice eat, Jensen with the scatter the weak that uh, like he just uses at the moment he sees the W, like boom, which is uh, uh, timed. Here with the with the flash, because either either smoothie flash is there or he doesn't W anyone at all, and there's no situation where they force getting no flash. I think this is really really worth it for Team Liquid. I, we have to also pay attention to the bottom wave because right now the the creeps are crashing right because Team Liquid decided to stay. They fake the base and then they stayed when TSM base on their bottom bottom lane. And then boom, uh, the bottom wave crashed, and then uh, now, uh, of course, Team Liquid with the Ocean. Ocean is incredibly broken. So when you have matchups like Gangplank, Syndra, uh, or champions like Gangplank, Syndra that can really abuse Ocean, then like you're in a heap of trouble. Like it's it's game changing how powerful uh, an Ocean Drake can be for these champions uh, at the highest level of gameplay. Uh, these players know how to make use of the Ocean Drake uh, to the max. Bottom wave is in good position. Kalista lost a lot of creeps here. A lot of creeps. And uh, the bot lane of Team Liquid should be in time to, to catch it. They're gonna catch. Based on Sven. Boots and Dagger. Not too fancy. Are you allowed to coach during the game uh, as well? Uh, no. Uh, I am allowed to uh, participate in the draft. I get to listen. And then uh, in, for example, best of five series... I tell the guys, oh, you did this wrong and you do this better, and I can talk with them in between the games. Not in game. I wish Drake is just broken altogether. It's really good on Tam, Varus Lane 2. Uh, I don't know if uh, it works in the jungle. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not too sure about how it works if you get the effect constantly, if you're fighting jungle creeps or if it uh, counts. I think it only. I think the effect only doesn't uh, count when you uh, when you're in combat with heroes. Big C is lead here. Big C is lead top. The fact that uh, Vladimir and Rexai is well isolated, uh, like they're not playing together at all, is very positive for Gangplank. Later, Gangplank can still win the matchup Bobby won against Vlad. I don't know how it changes with PD, but in the past it was like you buy, buy more of Malmortius and you're super, super happy. Okay, okay. Another big blunder by Double Lift is uh, uh, playing all crazy. I, they could choose just not to, to pursue this because of Rek'Sai position. Gangplank ult gets dropped. Okay. I think Xmithy maybe could... Oh, no, with the Healy Cat. I thought maybe he could flash and ult the Kalista. Oh. With the steal, Core JJ fixing his KDA.
How would you feel about them letting uh, coaches be on stage with the players coaching? Do you think it would be too much for the players? I would love that. I know there's a lot of coaches that wouldn't be ready for that at all because they never, um, uh, they never, they've never been in game. They've never been in that scenario. So that could be really fun for me. I would be like. I'm up for the challenge. Uh, practicing shot calling would be a lot of fun. Just have, you know, you can just get the most branded, mechanically good players ever, you know, and just uh, just put them uh, put them on mechanical champions. They can focus on it, and you just micromanage them, you know. You say, oh, go here, push here, base here. Look for this, look for this, you know. It would be it would be amazing. take a step back we spoke about the ocean drake 2v2 mid lane should be a, uh, a stalemate I think when I think if Syndra is not being pressured I think she's, she's fine I think Akkadian was really really controlled this entire game and had very little success uh, besides the one kill but yeah, this situation right now they just don't continue uh, if they respect the timer of Skarner and play to their timer uh, Gali does need to die they keep Kalisto ultimate they can pressure off of this and maybe create something now with the kill it means also that they might uh, reach a blade rune king earlier on Varus I think Varos might have enough gold to buy Blade, and that shifts uh, Blade matchups completely. Both AD carries one Blade. It's such a big spike. Go JJ in the darkness here. Okay. Kind of rough for Gangplank to use his TP for, for nothing. Kind of pointless. Varus with the blade, they should have full bottom prior. Uh, Broken Blade has uh, TP advantage. Depending if he can get prior or not, uh, maybe he th this is the opportunity in to equalize bottom matchup. But right now it's in favor of Team Liquid for sure with the blade advantage. Uh, they should look to. Uh, I don't know if it's too late because they didn't pressure through mid at all. But I feel like if they con con control the vision around mid lane, play into bottom, set up a TP situation, broken blade, then they can kind of nullify the advantage Team Liquid has in the bottom lane. We're going for top lane instead. First dive coming in very late in the game. Impact should be dead. Very, very free. Okay. Can Skarner equalize this? I doubt it. So this is something that can happen throughout the game. The moment Vladimir has Pryo, in any matchup, he's one of the best champions in the game to, to dive with. Which is something that isn't emphasized on a lot. But he can reset aggro, he heals up a lot, and he has a lot of upfront damage. Uh, he's ranged. There's uh, a lot of reasons why he's really good to dive with. Naturally, he wants to itemize Hourglass and so forth. There's a million uh, things that uh, make Vladimir good uh, for dives. And... Uh, Usually people talk about Vladimir late game and so forth, scaling, blah, blah, blah. In this matchup, I think you have the option to always uh, uh, set up dives on the gangplank. Team Liquid very well with the Tamkins here using their prio. Uh, they're sitting in fog. They're ready to play. TSM's bot lane is calling this out. They have a blade to match. No plating for this herald, so it's a bit later than anyone would, uh, of course, would want it to be. T 
Tis and bottom prior because Team Liquid uh, were out of position when they hovered into mid lane. They have to retake it on next wave. Tsm punishing with the Cloud Drake. Uh, very standard stuff. I think uh, Tsm and Team Liquid have both a very good eye on when they should force objectives and when they shouldn't. So I think that's uh, very positive. This is something that uh, my own team had a hard time uh, uh, figuring out. Trinity Force, not sure if Gangplank was going to buy Mercury. Mercury feels weird to buy on Gangplank a lot of the times, but it gives you some MR. It just is a bit weird because you have a natural cleanse, so the tenacity is less valued, but it's not too shabby. There's not a lot of other boots that are that fancy uh, for Gangplank. Will Jensen clap caps of Faker? No, I think Team Liquid has kind of turned Jensen into uh, a better Pabelter. I think he's not gonna get demolished, but I think he's not gonna clap anyone either. I think Caps, Faker, Rookie, they are uh, in a tier of their own at uh, MSI. And I think Jensen is one step below. When will be the start of LEC Summer? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know the exact date, but some sometime around June. So Rift Herald was used on top which I don't like too much. I think Skarner should be matching. I think uh, Team Liquid can win. I think they should not be uh, splitting uh, the map like this. I don't like it too much. I think GP and Skarner have very little potential of actually uh, killing Vladimir. So I think this is a very, very nice trade here for, for uh, TSM. Vladimir even gives his turret alive. It's a, it's a very bad trade for Team Liquid. Very, very bad. I think the fact that they are uh, forcing a 2v1 on Vlad with Scanner GP is just a massive mistake. Really, really big mistake. These are very, very happy with this. Uh, Rek'Sai, even though he was very uh, lackluster in the early game, I would say, and Dex Smithy did a good job of spotting him. He did get value uh, where he wasn't supposed to, and uh, that's very positive. I wonder if Broken Blade could continues on that. Mid lanes, evenly matched here. TSM really, really in position to 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 win this game, I would say. After this play on bottom, where they broke the tower, and uh, Vladimir is in such a good state. Vladimir items, uh, they are scary. This is where Vladimir is very, very happy. And he's starting to pressure Gangplank 1v1 super hard alone. If Gangplank wants to survive in this lane, he needs to itemize heavily, uh, more heavy towards MR. And uh, if you itemize more heavy towards MR, it means your team fight is going to get a lot worse too. And then Rek'Sai uh, also has the potential of just one-shotting you later. So I think, uh, even though we know Team Liquid won this game, I think TSM definitely have the better conditions to, to win right now. The biggest question mark, Team Liquid, uh, how are they going to use Tamkench to spread the pressure onto the map? But the lane phase was so extended, we're right now at 19 minutes into the game, and Tamkench's strength is going to be kind of nullified. Vladimir is going to go into bottom. Tamkench, uh, he has a lot more leeway to pressure the map through mid when he can actually TP into bottom, ult into bottom, and uh, make sure that there's uh, nothing that can be taken on the other side of the map. But half of that pressure is gone when the Baron is uh, at play. So I think Team Liquid, their strength was between uh, 10 to 20 minute mark, and uh, 
I think right now TSM's composition is going to be a bit stronger and they're going to scale a bit better. I'm very curious uh, as to how uh, Team Willy could actually manage to win this game. We have an eat. They get caught. KDN waiting with the knockup. I think you should not wait. It's a mistake to wait because the longer he waits, it means Kojic gets further away, W gets further away. Deja vu, deja vu of the previous situation. Gangplank will be doing a lot of damage. Because Akadian like, should not wait. There's no reason to wait here. Like, just fucking go, you know? Just knock up the first moment you can. Maybe he has knock up on cooldown. No, he doesn't. He has no knock up on cooldown. He just fucking knock up the boom, right here. And he's trying to get both or something. I, I don't know what he's trying to do. He, he should just knock up. Like, if he knocks up Tam, he's knocking up both. That's just how it works. So here they can kill him earlier, hit him earlier. Those milliseconds actually matter because it means that they're not going to be in turret range when they start hitting him. Because here, both Smoothie died and Sven is pretty much dead too. Impact comes in, shoots his gun, uses his dagger to cut. Syndra out of position. Let's pay attention to Syndra position here. Syndra just wants to support the play. But I think Syndra is taking uh, the wrong path. Syndra needs to take the safer path uh, next to Scanner. And then all will be good. But instead, Jensen takes a full combo, and Broken Blade is in position. Okay. Impact, the true. Acading, super fed on the Zwek side. Maybe give kill to Vlad, you know, it's also nice. Uh, it's just an idea. Okay, crazy dive from TSM. Right now, TSM, uh, no TP on Vlad. Vlad, two level advantage, should be able to pressure the, the GP quite hard. He's going for Sterax uh, to just to be able to survive. Rexa as well. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, GP should not be able to do much this game. Considering Vlad in position, Cloud Drake is also very neat uh, for uh, Rek'Sai and Vladimir that rely very hard on mobility. I think TSM should look to play 2 2 1, meaning uh, mid prior. I think Team Liquid should be in a best, better position to do, but I think on top side, if they force 2v2 and get prior through top side and TSM's bot lane just hover into top, meaning let's say Leblanc and Rek'Sai go through here. They pressure through here and they get vision through top. I think uh, is is the best way to play it because I think mid prio should be in favor of Team Liquid's champions with Syndra and uh, Tam and uh, Aros. It's hard for Leblanc to to get any uh, realistic poke off, and I think uh, Kalista might be in danger of getting caught. I think if they play Leblanc Rexai pressure through top into mid. Definitely, I like it. The most important thing though is that you need to be ready to hover into top side because if Team Liquid, uh, if Tam Kench gets prior and they pressure into top first, it will be very, very hard for them to to react. So the way you want to play it is Kalista and Galio, they hover into top side while Leblanc and Rexai clear the wave and then they walk into the river and then you pressure onto the mid wave. The biggest weakness of playing this way is that you might lose your mid-tower, but I think it's still the best way to play the game. And we will have, just have to see how it kind of uh, pans out. No QSS yet, so Skarna is very, very happy that he can choose kind of which target is the most annoying. I think right now LeBlanc is pretty, pretty big. Uh, denying her uh, would mean a great deal. I don't know if they have enough power to, to one-shot the Vladimir. Some kind of on the fence here about which target they should aim for. Flash, Scanner is going to pretty much decide the next fight. Vladimir getting his TB back up, GP matched, Leblanc getting prior, Rexa should just be in fog, I think Syndra should not be able to walk on the wave top side, TSM getting mid prior as well now. Interesting. Akalista is also very good at getting mid prior, right? But I think they should keep Syndra in mid, 
uh, take full mid prio and then Varos into top side. I think uh, Syndra in mid lane will be much stronger than having Varos in the mid lane. I think they have no chance of engaging on Syndra when she has Tamkench, but uh, they're just sending her on side, which I disagree with. It seems like the, the Varos has a hard time of, of getting prio. I wonder what this is about, people buying Hex Drinker uh, on Varos instead of Witsend. I personally think Witsend is better. Right now he could have had a Negatron Cloak, would have been quite juicy. Uh, I'm not too happy. Did X Smithy have R for that bot jungle fight? What did you mean? What, what did I miss about X Smithy? To be honest, he need to he needs to wake up. I didn't even realize how bad Xmithy played here. He should just fucking ult him. And they should just one shot him. Because they can. For sure they can one shot him. Can they? She has marks. Can they one shot? Full combo Syndra electrocute. Stun out of it. Hit Q twice. I think they can, no? So basically, Ninja Tabi is better for lane. It's good against all in lanes. Basically, if you survive the initial all in, you're good. But in this game, I kind of disagree with it because there's Vladimir and uh, and Leblanc. The reason you do it on Blade of Rune King champs that go uh, attack speed item second is because they have a lot of attack speed in their build naturally. So missing the Berserk Reeves attack speed is not uh, too horrible. Okay, let's fast forward to where we were. I really want Team Liquid to just put Syndra mid. I would never ever want to be uh, Syndra on side against LeBlanc Rex side. Holy. Team Liquid with the punish. So let's take a look here. Callista's on mid wave. He's taking long path. Vladimir not in position. Double lift in top. Okay, then it's just trolling. Blows. Okay. Syndra stood on top. Okay. Big blunder by Acadian. TSM lost all of their pressure though. Team Liquid were allowed to build vision again. They were allowed to push out. GP got to push out. It's gonna take some time before Vladimir can pressure on the bottom again. They want some time here. Vladimir level 16. Buying what is looking like a spellbinder. And now Broken Blade trolling the game. Interesting. I need to just press tab and notice that this man has uh, fucking Hex Drinker. But he also fucked up his combo, I believe. Did he get full channel E? It just does so little damage, so it doesn't look like it. Oh, it's just a disaster. This M really didn't need a hero. 
I feel like the mistakes from the previous game are kind of shining through here for TSM. Where they don't uh, team fight or force the fights the right way. Broken Blade getting caught, Akkadian getting caught. They're trying to force things that don't need to be forced. Because TSM and their position, really, they, all they need to do is just keep putting Vladimir on bottom, keep contesting the prio. It's hard for Team Liquid to push the top wave. They had the mid tower alive as well. I think TSM was in a great position. Oh, Jesus. Acadian fishing for a pirate. You don't fish for pirates. That's quite a disaster. TSM, TSM, TSM. Yeah, I think I think Phantom with Sand is definitely uh, the build. He has little tempo so he can break attack speed cap. I just I'm not a fan of Maul also. Still, same thing stands. I think TSM should be able to pressure uh, through bottom. Uh, Gangplank has quite a bit of items. I don't know if it changes the 1v1 matchup, but I don't think it should. I think uh, Broken Blade should be able to just kill him if he walks up too far. Q sensors are starting to show up. Q sensors is pretty high value considering enemy team has Varos too. So now when Syndra shows on top wave, TSM should get full mid prio, take the full vision on top side. Vladimir can go push bottom aggressively now because TSM has position to force Nashor. Vladimir should just fucking go deep now. And now TSM should never fucking let go. Never fucking let go. Vladimir, keep pushing. Keep pushing here. No reason for you to go. No reason for you to be scared either. If enemy, enemy team shows Tamkens on bottom or Scanner on bottom, they force Nasher and they're going to be in a good position to do so. Maybe they are respecting Gangplank ult because Gangplank ult could be dangerous if they go through with the play that I am uh, suggesting. They have, uh, hmm, they have Rek'Sai to tank with his Garden Angel. Kalista damage is pretty decent on Nash, LeBlanc damage is pretty shit. Maybe they don't have the best Nash team. Uh, maybe Gangplank will just fuck them. Uh, it could be, uh, could be uh, potentially the reason why I didn't want to do this. But I still think Vladimir should push bottom. I think he should like put himself in a position where he threatens dive. Because rotating into mid when Metara is alive, Team Liquid are not gonna let go of it. It's just uh, they're not gonna get it at all. Bjergsen pushing top wave aggressively. This I like. Vladimir going bottom to push as well, uh, finishing, uh, what's it called? I don't remember the item, the last whisper that has executioner. Lord Dominic, no? I don't know. I don't know what's called. Could you give me top 3 AD carry at the moment, like the champions or the players? Interesting game. I think uh, the longer it goes, the more items Vladimir gets, I think the happier they are. Finish the death cap on Vladimir and I think he can one shot the entire enemy team. I 
I compare the two teams and I feel like these some have uh, the better situation uh, to, to force an enemy. The only thing that's important here is the Bjergsen isn't the one that gets uh, scanner ulted. Team Liquid opposition has five on the same side, so it's easy for them to. Okay. TP. Okay, Broken Blade panicked a bit. He didn't need to panic. Okay. So what happened to Bjergsen? Why did he get one shot? Okay, send root. I think TSM are just forcing a fire way too late. They're pulling the trigger uh, very late on this. And they also use Rex IE in a, in a bad manner here. They don't, they get denied. No W on Galio. Uh, he gets uh, CC'd. Vladimir uh, gets uh, denied, and I think also Broken Blade panics here. Like here, he can just play it. He can QSS, he can take his time, he's not gonna get one shot. Syndra's not in range. He can pull the next CC, he can play around his hourglass, but he just ults the GP alone and uh, it doesn't get any value. So I think TSM probably could have forced a way better fight here. What they could have done as well is already now when Team Liquid is showing, if they decide to position the way they are right now, they should be taking over the space here. They should be face checking this area right now. Especially when Syndra shows. But they are very late to do so and Team Liquid get the mid prio and TSM is not contesting anything. And then if they want to fight, fight on this, I think legit you start channeling your fucking TP now, like like here. Start channeling your TP right fucking now, go with Rek'Sai, look for angles and uh, you'll be good. But the TP comes way too late. The TP is channeled right now. Team Liquid have, have a very easy disengage to do. Uh, Rek'Sai has no E, no W on Galio. Broken Blade panics here, uses his ult when he doesn't uh, necessarily need to, he can play it much slower, and then he loses his flash too. And Vladimir flashes a big cooldown, very big cooldown. Barrier, flash, Skarner is, is lose, lost. Should Vladimir just flash on enemy carries? No, because he had nothing. Uh, he doesn't do any damage there, he doesn't kill anyone either. He just he just wasted his ult. This I'm not a fan of. Okay, it's working. Okay, okay, game winning play here. Okay. Hmm. I think here uh, impact should die if Zven plays good. Don't need to hit the tower with uh, with Galio. Can use says earlier. Here I think there's no reason for Sven and Bjergsen not to commit. Like here, jump forward. But he kind of r r jumps into the wall. Jump forward. Leblanc will have spells up. I think they could have forced. Skana has nothing. I think Gangplank uh, probably should have died there. Can you tell me why Chris is often picked in Pro Scene? Because every game I watch she is so useless. So basically, early game she's very strong. Level 1, she's one of the strongest AD carries uh, in the game. Uh, her hardest counter is Draven, and that's a champion not a lot of people play. She has an ultimate that's very, very powerful. It allows you to do a lot more with support than, than 
than usually. You can commit way harder, you can pull yourself out, you can CC again. Uh, she provides uh, a lot of safety to herself. You have an indicator that you don't necessarily need to peel, and you have a win condition uh, very early in the game. You have something you can play for. Uh, free objective control is not the case anymore. Like you don't, the, the rend is not, not the main reason people take it. It's usually because of the lane matchup. The lane matchup is the most important thing, and especially when Galio got into the picture, it means Kalista is better because you don't want to pick Alistair into Galio, and the counters to to Galio are champions that are not so good into Kalista. For example, Tamkench I think is not that great into Kalista because the rent stacks and he uh, his E is pretty useless, I think is not that great. What do you think about Void Scepter Iron? So you mean the Vladimir and the Leblanc when Void? I think, well, considering there's a Maw on Varus and a lot of Mercs, uh, I think it's okay. It's, it's not bad. That the game, uh, everyone is starting to reach like max level and everyone has MRP level, I think is, is not bad, yeah. The biggest reason people pick, uh, m like 80% of the reasoning why people pick champs is because of the lane matchups in pro scene. It's not more complicated than that. Like obviously you don't go uh, to the extreme side of it, you don't fucking uh, lock in uh, Pantheon every game, right? But 80% uh, of the reasoning behind the champ is lane phase. You can't pick uh, Lulu, Kog'Maw, Masi, uh, Kale every game, right? Because Oh, if we have max items, we're going to auto win the game. No, 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 it doesn't work like that, right? Uh, there's a lot of other steps to the game. But if you can't survive early game, if you don't have a lane phase, all of a sudden you're going to be get broken down. These sense straight off the bat, they start Nashor. Against Gangplank, it might be dangerous. It's something we spoke about before. Okay, okay, okay. The run stacks are popping. Gangplank gold. Oh. Acadian getting knocked up. This is like a. Holy. This is, this is high school all over again for some people. Getting knocked up when you don't want to. This is quite a disaster. So I spoke about, you know, Team Liquid uh, from before when Vladimir TP'd, Gangplank didn't TP. Gangplank has TP advantage, TSM are kind of on a clock. They want to force, but they need to look for ways to turn. Bjerg is, is in position, but then he uses combo on Nash, it looks like. And then now Achilles is getting killed by Nash. GA gets popped, Roku Blade is 1 HP. There was no real... Uh, I guess they, they should split tank it, right? They should split tank it because they have lifesteal and Vladimir lifesteal as well. But then there should be kind of a plan on how to turn, because Team Liquid are face checking this, there should be kind of a plan on how... Uh, like what the next step is. But there seems to be no plan. They're calling to finish, and calling to finish is, is a disaster. The plan here is, it should be, guys, let's force Let's force Gangplank TP and peace the fuck out. Gangplank TP is, is getting channeled now. To be honest, Team Liquid could have fucking stopped this Nasher even as 4. Gangplank doesn't really do anything. This is a shit national. Gangplank Gold is 2 OP. They need to split tank it. And then they need to be willing to turn on Skarner. Because Skarner is spotting them, he's doing everything. Like here, the Skarner is just being uh, a Formula 1 car. He's just chilling. Uh, turn on Skarner. Uh, split tank the Nasher. I think they have a fight going for themselves. But this is not really a fight. This is a disaster. And a Nasher uh, for Team Liquid. Which are now on the winning side of the game. Well, it felt very controlled from Team Liquid. 
it's as if they uh, like seen a characteristic with TSM on how how they tend to make mistakes and they can just wait patiently for them because I feel like that's been the story of this game. Team Liquid just waiting, 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 Broken Blade getting caught twice, Akkadian getting caught, bad natural calls and uh, TSM's inability to uh, to play through side when needed. I think maybe they over-respected the Tom Kench. Now Gangplank is buying IE. What's he buying? Okay, GA. Low testo. Low testo build. Tweet your big plays to us using hashtag LCS big plays. Okay. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm still looking at this game like even in this position even though team liquid have a gold advantage it's not that significant all of that gold is on gangplank and that's a champion you can deny if you kill the barrels you play around it uh, the gangplank gold is very dangerous sure but I still feel like this is the type of game that the Vladimir uh, a good Vladimir can one in nine I guess tricky, right? There's a lot of MR on enemy team. There's a Tam Kench. But of course, the, he, the Vladimir also has a team. If Gangplank gets some good barrels off, then TSM just ought to lose fight. Also, kind of blows that, you know. Uh, Rek'Sai, I, I, I think, is pretty fucking useless right now. Oh, Team Liquid with the, with the Rope Dope. The, the Varus, Varus Tam Coco on the mid lane, forcing the finish. Holy. Making some scatter, decision making wise. Okay. Good decision making from Team Liquid here. It just seems like Team Liquid is way more calm and collected throughout. Uh, this game they seem to be very reasonable about what they can and cannot do and uh, they seem to have no trust in TSM's ability to, to finish out the game and now uh, it should be over it should be over big time very hard for TSM to wave clear they need to walk up very far on the wave broken blade with the TP Will we get the fight we deserve? 39 minutes in. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's uh. Oh, the lick. Let's not forget Code JJ's early ends. He ended early in the game. Okay. Well, to summarize the game, uh, I think TSM uh, did a lot of good things. They punished Team Liquid when they put the Herald on top. Uh, they got some fights at the bottom side. Vladimir got rolling. I think they were in a way more dominant position because I think the phase that would be the hardest for them on paper is when Syndra and Tamkens actually get mid prior and they can spread their pressure across the map. But then when Baron uh, becomes relevant, they can no longer pressure in the bottom. It would take them too much time to kill the Vladimir. Uh, Rek'Sai also got a lot of money, which uh, you can argue either way, you know, some people think Rek'Sai scales well, some people don't. I think in, the, in a game like this, he's not going to really pressure anyone against Syndra and Varus, especially if Varus has Ninja Tabi. Bjergsen and Akkadian should have pressured through topside. They should have made uh, the top wave crash all the way, and then put Team Liquid in the position where they are the ones face checking, and uh, they should be willing to hit the fucking scanner. Chain him, hit, 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 use Kalista and start a fight of some sort. But uh, uh, the attempts of forcing anything from TSM were very desperate or poorly played. 
they could have also taken the approach where they play with patience, they keep the Vladimir TP and they make Vladimir reach full items and then they win the game. But uh, none, none of that was happening. I felt like Team Liquid they didn't do much proactive plays. They were just kind of waiting for TSM to, to make the mistakes. And I think uh, if you think about Team Liquid's potential performance internationally, that could be very, very scary. Because I think uh, Team Liquid got away with, uh, with murder here. Okay. Did you watch IG versus JDG? Well, yeah, uh, not, not like hardcore watch it, but uh, I watched it while I was like eating breakfast and shit. Champions. Okay, Vibenos, your question. The best AD carry champions I would say right now is like Vayne. Like if you're playing solo queue, I would play Vayne. I think uh, Tristana is also very good for solo queue. Kogmo, Draven. Draven, Vayne, probably the, the best one for solo queue. I think if you want to have the most amount of success and win the most games, if you're good at Vayne and Draven, you're going to auto win games. Players, the best players. Do you want me to accept, Elena? Yeah. If you are... Uh, uh, referring to players, the best players in the world uh, on the AD carry position, I would say Jackie Love. I would say Jackie Love. I would say Teddy. And then Deft. Deft is really, really good. I think Viper in the right meta can be the best AD in the world because he has like the potential to, to play a lot of different champions and he can do that a lot better. Teddy is better than Jackie Love. Mm. Like, uh, I. I'm not so sure about that. Double lift is not as good as the others. I think perks and double lift are similar level, but I think like deft, deft imp, deft imp, Jackie Love, Teddy are really really insane like really insane like really 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 fucking good Uzi I ah, you, you don't judge an AD carry about you, you don't judge an AD carry based off of their silly mistakes you judge them off of how good they can be when push comes to shove. And uh, Jackie Love can really deliver. Like he can really, really deliver. And then uh, laning, laning phase wise, IG's bot lane are really, really good. And something that Jackie Love has that these other eight carries don't is that he's willing to fucking pick Draven. And I think that's a big plus. Thoughts of G2's chances versus IG? I haven't watched IG games. Well, it's gonna be fucking crazy, dude. Uh, I, I think IG is a very, very scary team. I think the finals is going to be IG versus G2. Uh, I think G2 is better than SKT. Well, it's, it's not even... It's wrong to say that they're better because they, they, they are so different. They are so fucking different. Like SKT makes it seem like it's impossible to fucking win games against them. But G2 are willing to take very, very bold risks in the early game to, to get ahead. And they are also very, very creative. I think coming into MSI, G2 is 
the most creative team in terms of what they can do flexibility wise they can play a piece bottom they can funnel they can switch roles they can play everything everywhere i think that versatility can be very very scary especially in best of ones and in best of fives so in terms of creativity i think g2 uh, comes out ahead uh, but g2 didn't win uh, their best of fives because of mechanical skill they won because they absolutely, like, strategically destroyed Origin. And Origin is a smart team. They have the mechanics and they also have the direction in-game to, uh, to execute on what they need to execute on. And I think this is something that G2 improved. You are uh, taking this meme that was created in terms of what G2 is, or they're just mechanical skill. Uh, but they showed much more than that. G2, SKT, IG, 100% is top 3. They are 100% top 3. IG looks really fucking scary. Really, really fucking scary. Well, I'm going to stop the recording right there.